An ADC analog to digital converter. It's the opposite of a DAC. It's how your analog pin on your microcontroller works, and it's how we get a digital audio file from a microphone. As usual, there's a whole bunch of ways to build one. Two quite common ways both involve a microcontroller, one of them using a timing circuit like an RC network, and the other one using a DAC in successive approximation. But I wanted to come up with a combinational way. Combinational meaning you apply inputs and there's a propagation delay as the voltages settle, so the outputs follow the inputs in real time with a certain slew or whatever it's called, with no processing involved. And I've come up with two ways to do this. The way I'm going over today uses more parts, but it's faster and it's simpler. However, when I say more parts, I really mean it. For a certain number of bits, let's say a 10-bit ADC, like is on the Arduino Uno's microcontroller. To do 10 bits with this circuit would require over 2,000 parts. Haha, <laughs> no. I have a 3-bit ADC implemented on my board that I'll be showing you. So this method does not scale well, but if you only need a few bits, if you only need to check your analog voltage in a very rough way, you want to know if a 5 volt signal is, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 volts, you don't need it down to the millivolt, well this will work fine, nice and easy. The 3-bit only uses 16 parts. The other one I'll show you in the future uses a lin- it scales linearly. So every time you add a bit of resolution, you're adding the same number of parts. Parts. It's more complex and it's slower, but you can actually make one. But this is still really interesting, so let me show you. If you've ever done any programming, you might be familiar with the term a binary search. And in a certain sense, that's what an ADC is. Your digital signal is going to have two voltages, a low and a high, the minimum and maximum that the voltage can be. A one-bit ADC, one digit, you basically divide it in half. So zero would be here and one would be here. So you're saying, is it in this half or this half? And that's one bit. If you add another bit, then you're dividing those in half and you get your second digit like so. So we get zero, one, two, three. We can do it again to add a third digit. So this would be a three bit DAC, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this one is zero, zero, zero. This one is one, one, one. This is how we digitize an analog signal. So if you look at it from a human perspective, we would go digit by digit. We'd say the first digit, which half is it in? The second digit in that half, which half is it in? And do that. We just keep saying which half of that half of that half. Now, if we're talking about parts, let's look at this end instead. Each of these is an eighth, one over eight. So we could say, is the signal greater than one eighth, greater than two eighth, greater than three eighth? And if we just have a sequence of comparators with reference voltages, then we'll turn the analog signal into a digital signal of whatever resolution we want. And then we can just hook it up to something to compress it down and put it in a microcontroller to read as a digital signal. That's essentially how this one works. I have a three bit DAC there, but I'm gonna do a two bit on the board just cause the board's only so big. So a two bit DAC has four values. So it could be within zero to one quarter, one to two quarter, two to three quarter, or three to four quarters of the voltage range. So we do it with a normal single sided power supply. We don't need negative voltage. You can make an ADC that reads negative voltages, but it's a little trickier. So I'll save it for a future topic. So there's our signal. It's gonna go from that to there. So we have our voltage range and we divide it into four pieces. So we want to know if it's more than this, more than this, or more than this. If it's more than this, we know it's in here. If it's more than this, we know it's in here. If it's more than this, we know it's in here. And if it's not more than any of them, we know it's in here. So that's the default case. So we need three comparisons for four values, two bits of ADC. So first we need reference voltages. So for four values, we have four identical size resistors. Voltage divider, zero quarter, one quarter, two quarter, three quarter, and four quarter. And we'll also need three comparators. The outputs will be digital signals, A, B, or C, because I'm using these with open loop gain, which means it's going to slam against one rail or the other with its crazy gain. Let's just call the signal E. So we put the signal into all the comparators, and then we have our reference voltage. We'll put three quarters into this one, two quarters into this one, and one quarter into this one. So we have four possible outcomes, and then the values for A, B, and C for each of these. If the voltage is greater than three quarters, then all of these are gonna be true, because they're saying is the input signal greater than my reference voltage. So we're gonna get high, high, and high. If the voltage is greater than two quarters, but not greater than three quarters, then A is gonna be low, 
but the other two will still be high. If it's greater than one quarter, but not greater than two quarters, then both of these are going to be low, but the last one will still be high. And if it's not greater than one quarter even, then all of them are gonna be low. Now, as it turns out, this pattern right here, if you've ever seen a priority encoder, that's what this pattern is. Because if A is high, you know that everything else is gonna be high. Because A is saying, this voltage is greater than my reference, but A's reference is greater than every other reference. So you have this kind of, you know, two triangles of highs one way and lows the other. So with a priority encoder, you could say A has the highest priority. If A is high, we don't care about the rest because we know what it's going to be. But if A is high, we know that the output is 3. But if A is not high, but B is high, regardless of what C is, the output is 2. If neither of those are high and C is high, then the output is 1. And otherwise, the output is 0. So you can hook it up to a priority encoder, and that's going to turn it into your binary number with one single chip. If you have a lot of bits, it'll take more than one. You can chain them together, but, you know, up to eight things, so a three bit, you only need one eight bit priority encoder. Now the logic goes the other way too. If C is low, then we know that everything else is going to be low because C is saying that the signal is less than its reference voltage and every other reference voltage is greater, so it's definitely going to be less than for those as well. So if you have an active low priority encoder, you just hook it up the other way. So let me show you that now. So if you were to have active low priority encoder, then this is how it would respond. You'll notice that I added a fourth column here. These are the three op amps the comparators. This one is just the fourth pin I've tied to low, the lowest priority pin I've tied to low, because you don't want a floating input. A priority encoder requires one of them to be on. If none of them are on, then it gives a signal. I think mine calls it GS or whatever. It tells you that none of them are on, but that requires extra logic. I can just tie this low and say, well, if none of these are on, that one's on, so tell me that one's on. So this avoids having to use the GS pin. I can leave it unplugged. And the only thing I have are the two outputs the 2-bit digital signal. So let's number these 0, 1, 2, and 3. On my chip, 7 is the highest priority and 0 is the lowest priority. So we'll just say 3 to 0. So 3 is the highest priority. So 3, the highest priority, is seeing a low here. And this is an active low chip, so it says, I don't care what everything else is, the answer is 3. But because it's an active low chip, it puts out low, low, because to it, that's 1, 1. But fortunately, I can think of this myself as zero, zero. I hooked up the lowest op amp, the one that was comparing it to one quarter voltage. If that one's low, then it's below one quarter voltage, which means I want the output to be a zero, and that's what we're getting. So when I did the video on that chip, I actually complained about it being active low. I said I didn't like it, it's confusing. And now it turns out to be pretty handy because it saved me having to invert signals. Go figure. But anyway, the next priority is here. The highest priority is high, so not active, but the next one is low, so it ignores zero and one. It says the output's two. So one zero, according to this chip, zero one, according to me. Here, three and two are both high, one is low, so the answer's one, so we get zero one. And then here, zero is low, so the answer is zero. So high and high are both zero to it, which for me, I treat as three. So it automatically converts it into an active high output just because I wire it up this way. So let that be a lesson to you and especially to me. Sometimes active high is good and sometimes active low is good. They make chips for a reason. That's probably the lesson. They make it that way for a reason. So you can adapt this design to whatever chips you decide to use. If you want the op amps to give the opposite signals, like you want it to compare and give a high instead of a low, or a low instead of a high, flip the inputs because it's an open gain. It's just comparing one to the other. So if you say A is greater than B equals op amp, then if you swap the inputs, then it's just B greater than A, and it'll flip the answer. And there's always an inverter chip, if that's easier. Or you could even do it in software. Whenever you read your ADC with your microcontroller, if necessary, you could just, you know, binary flip the bits there. Options. But for now, let me just show you. I'm using a 5-volt supply, single-sided, normal digital. I have my output board is going to display the 3-bit output of my 3-bit ADC. I have 8 resistors. I'm using a 27K resistor, it doesn't really matter. But I have 8 of them giving me 0 through 8 eighths. 
182838, those are my reference voltages. I have four of the LM358N op amp, which is the super cheap one that I got a whole box of. They do not put out the full rail voltage on high. They're not rail to rail, but it's high enough that it works as a digital high. Since I only care about the output as a digital signal, it works just fine. And I'm using, I did a video on this, the SN74HC148N 8-3 to priority encoder active low. Go look at my video on that if you're unsure, but it's just the 8-bit version of what I did on the board a minute ago. So my input signal is just a potentiometer, and let me zoom in. So this multimeter will show you my input voltage. Right now at zero volts, you can see I'm getting zero. If I turn it all the way up, to 5, you can see 4.99 volts, and I'm getting a 7. So if I turn it up slowly, one result at a time, it's going to be imprecise because I'm just using a screwdriver, but very basically, I turn it up just about until we go from 0 to 1, and it's about 0.6 volts. If I go up to 2, it happened at about 1.2 volts. It's 3 at about 1.8, 4 at 2.5, 5 at 3.1, 6 at 3.8, and 7 at about 4.4. .4. So let me turn it down in a continuous motion and we'll go 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Going up the other way, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And there's the DAC. Luckily, the way that the priority encoder worked, I don't need any other logic and I get exactly the bit pattern I want. As simple as that. A 3-bit ADC, 8 values, so you need 8 resistors, and 7 op amps. I'm using 2 op amps to a chip, so that's 4 chips, and then 1 priority encoder because it all fits on one of those. So you can see that this is only practical for small ones. I wouldn't want to do more than a 4-bit ADC. That would probably still be fine. You can get quad op-amp chips. I wouldn't want to wire it up, but if you were etching a PCB or something, then soldering 16 resistors and 4 chips is nothing. So there you go. Now, another video, which is not coming immediately because I have a few things to do before then, because it's actually, it's not that complex a design, but it's a little complex. The other combinational ADC will be coming soon. I have a few things to do in the meantime. For now, I'll be seeing you.